Modular Remote Terminal Units RTUs for short, are used in a wide range of applications. For example, in telecontrol applications of the water and wastewater industry. I will now show you how to set up a modular RTU based on a SIMATIC S7 controller. This can be accomplished either with a communications processor, CP for short, or a telecontrol interface module, TIM for short. Thanks to their multi-protocol capability, you can choose between the following well-known and widespread telecontrol protocols. IEC 6870-5, DNP3, or the Siemens protocols CNOT ST7 or Telecontrol Basic. You can thus set up a PLC-based modular RTU based on the Sematic S7-1200 or the S7-1500, or even with a distributed controller ET200SP. These can then be connected to a SCADA control center. In the next 10 minutes, I will show you how easy it is to configure and commission an RTU with the NP3 protocol. I will use an S7-1500 with the telecontrol interface module TIM-1531 IRC. Our RTU consists of a Sematic S7-1500 and a TIM-1531 IRC. The Sematic acquires an analog value as a measured value from the connected flow meter C-Trans Mac 5000. In addition, it controls a valve. This is simulated here on the panel. The TIM is connected to the Profinet interface of the Sematic with a patch cable in order to read the process values from there. As control system, a WinCC telecontrol project with DMP3 driver is pre-configured. Our DMP3 RTU has the IP address 192, 168, 100, 10. The DNP3 master has the IP address 192, 168, 100, 100. As DNP3 address, I use address 10 for the RTU. The DNP3 master operates under DNP3 address 1. Our DNP3 RTU is to transmit an alarm and a measured value to the control center. The alarm is a status information of the type digital input. It is transmitted as object group 2, including timestamp and as an event. The MP3 address of the object is index 1. I will later simulate the alarm via this button on the panel. The measured value of the flow meter is also transmitted to the master as event, including timestamp. The DNP3 address of the measured value is index 5. Since it is a real value, object group 32 variation 7 is used. The DNP3 master sends a command, object group 12 on index 20 to the RTU. I have already prepared a TIA portal project. It consists of a Sematic S7-1500. The Sematic reads the flow rate value from the C-Trans Mac 5000. A digital input and digital output are simulated on the panel. First, I add a TIM-1531 IRC and connect it to the Ethernet port of the Sematic. Then I also connect the TIM with a WAN for communication with the DNP3 master. Next, I configure the IP address with which the TIM or the DNP3 RTU communicates with the master. This is the IP address 192, 168, 100, 10. Now I select the communication protocol, DMP3 in our case. I assign the TIM module to the Sematic S7-1500 CPU. The TIM and the CPUs thus form a DNP3 RTU within the TIA portal project. Then I configure the DNP3 address of my RTU. It is DNP3 address 10. In order for the DNP3 RTU to be psychically synchronized by the master with date and time information, we configure the time synchronization in the X1 interface, which is the interface to the DNP3 master. Receive time via WAN in the X1 interface in the time grid of EG once per hour. If we also want to pass on the time received from the master to the CPU, we configure a synchronization grid for the X3 interface to the CPU. Send time to local station in the minute grid. Then I configure the connection to the DMP3 master. 
The RTU must know which DNP3 and which IP address the master has. Furthermore, we must define via which interface of the TIM our DNP3 master can be reached. For this, we change to the connection configuration. Network view, telecontrol, DNP3. I set up a new connection from our RTU 10 to the master with the DNP3 address 1. The starting point is RTU 10. Connection via TIM X1 interface. Master or endpoint is DNP3 address 1 with IP address 192, 168, 100, 100. The DNP3 partner is of the type master station. Now I can compile the configuration and load it into the CPU as well as the TIM. The DNP3 control center is thus capable of establishing a connection to the RTU10. However, no process data is transmitted yet. In order for our process data to be sent from the RTU to the DNP3 master, we create so-called data points in the data point editor for the TIM. A data point is a DNP3 object. It is read by the TIM from the S7 1500 CPU and then transmitted as a process value via the DNP3 protocol. A data point can also be a command or set point value sent by the master to the RTU. We now switch to the data point editor of the TIM 1531. I open the tag table or the DB on the CPU. I simply drag and drop the CPU tag that is to be sent to or received by the DMP3 master into the data point editor. Thus, the process values are transmitted on those tags as DNP3 data points from RTU to master or from master to RTU. I then define the DNP3 object types and the transmission parameters. According to the task, we send the alarm as an event of class 1 to the DNP3 master. DNP3 address of the data point is index 1. According to the task, the measured value of the RTU, e.g. the flow rate from the MAC 5000, is also sent as an event of class 1 to the DNP3 master. Since it is a real value, object group 32 variation 7 is selected. DNP3 address of the data point is index 5. For the measured value, we still need to define the appropriate threshold value. Only if the measured value experiences a change greater than the threshold value, it will be transmitted to the control center. This ensures that not every small change triggers a transmission and thus prevents unnecessary load on the communication route. We could of course also choose other criteria such as cyclic data transmission or combined transmission criteria. Finally, I configure the command that we receive from the control center. We receive a command, object group 12 variation 1 on DNP3 address index 20. We still need to set the exact type of command when receiving a command, e.g. whether we receive a so-called latch on, latch off or a pulse command. The configuration is now complete and we can compile and load the RTU. Loading the RTU means that we load and start both the Symantec S7-1500 CPU and the TIM-1531. Once the RTU is fully loaded and is restarted, the connection to the control center is established. The control center indicates that the RTU-10 is connected and we see the process data from the station on screen. If we trigger an alarm in the RTU, it will be displayed on screen and entered in the alarm list. If we change the flow rate at the MAC 5000, the measured value is also transmitted to the control center. There, it is shown and entered in the measured value archive with a timestamp. If we now send a command from the control center, it will be issued on the RTU. If the connection from the RTU to the control center should be interrupted, the process data is buffered on the RTU with a timestamp. When the connection is re-established, the process data is transmitted and archived in chronological order. Now I will interrupt the connection. I am generating an alarm and changing the flow. Now I will restore the connection. 
As soon as the connection is active again, the RTU transmits the buffered data. In the message list we see the alarm that occurred during the connection interruption. In the measured value archive we see a complete measured value curve, including the values that were recorded in the RTU during the interruption. You can see how quick and easy it is to configure and put into operation a modular semantic RTU. The configuration of an ET200SP or a 7200 RTU with our telecontrol CPs is just as quick and easy. If you want to upright the RTU with the IEC 6870-5 or CNOT ST7 protocol, this is possible as well with our multi-protocol CPs. The configuration in TIA portal is nearly identical. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.